think you would admit that you didn't really know fully what you were getting yourself into in terms of going from single to not being a relationship and what sort of issues that brings up. Oh, yes. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. Once again, I'm so happy to welcome back Treva Brandon Scharf, the author of Done Being Single and the podcast host of the same title with her husband, Robbie. Thank you for being here again, Treva. Thank you so much. You are my favorite, hottest podcaster on the planet. <laughs> Yay. I'll, ta I'll take that. <laughs> I'm talking about Robbie. We recently did a podcast where you two really let us into what it's like to go from a me, a single for a very long time, to a we. In your case, both of you had never been married and you got married after 50, which is perfect for today's topic, the psychological effects of being single for a long time time what that does being single for a long time for a new relationship or just the potential of a relationship that we really don't know what we don't understand maybe what we bring to the table what's so interesting about talking with you about this is that uh, I don't think and you know I'm answering for you now so correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think that you or I think you would admit that you didn't really know fully what you were getting yourself into in terms of going from single to now being a relationship and what sort of issues that brings up oh yes would you agree with that Absolutely. I mean, all of these points that you that we are going to discuss really are fear based. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. about it's really either about fear in the unknown or being rusty, feeling like I'm out of practice. I'm rusty. I don't even know where to begin. I don't know how to do this. I'm out of practice. So the, the first one here, this is interesting, is a fear of rejection or vulnerability could be a psychological effect that single people may, uh, may feel more worried about getting rejected or opening up in a new relationship. Sure. Did you, what do you think about that? I, well, I think fear of rejection is mm -hmm. pervasive. I, I, whether you're, whether you're single or partnered, I, I mean, at any time, at any age, we all hate rejection. I think any of your viewers who've been single for a really long time understand it's much safer to be single in a way, you know, you spare yourself the heartache and the disappointment and the, the devastation. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to kind of um, bite the bullet to the extent that you want to not be single anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is a big one, getting out of that rejection fear. Point number two, they bring up loneliness here, huge epidemic anyway. Yeah. But prolonged singlehood can lead to loneliness and isolation as people may lack a consistent emotional connection with a partner. If you're going to be single, everybody, mm -hmm. okay, which is less stigmatized than ever. It's never been a better time to be single. It really is. But the loneliness thing, yes, I mean, it is a part of single life. And I would say to those watching, make sure you have things going on mm -hmm. to take the edge off, you know, uh, have some hobbies, have a dog, pet, yeah. any little thing that's going to get you out of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's not really about being alone. I mean, I, I love being alone, but not always. Or, or if you do right. somebody that does somebody that truly enjoys being alone, there's, yeah. that's okay. It's if you don't want to be alone, that this, you know, it does have a psychological effect and that, you know, you, you want to be aware of that. You want to be aware of that. Lower yeah. self-esteem is number three here that uh, in a world, this is a good, great point in a world that emphasizes the importance of romantic partnerships and portrays them as benchmarks of success and happiness that people who have been single for a long time may question their own self-worth. Did you oh, go yes. through that? Of course I did. It was so, there was such self-loathing, right? And self-consciousness. Oh my God, I'm single. I'm still single. I'm now in my forties, mid forties, late forties. Oh my God, I'm 50. I'm still mm -hmm. not married. Um, what does that say about me? 
you know, I'm, I'm inadequate. Yeah. So yes, it does. It does play with your head, your mm-hmm. self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-concept. You start mm-hmm. to wonder what is wrong with me. You do. You feel like you're not something's wrong with you. If you're not in a couple, you're not married, you're not good enough to get married or you're not good enough. And that, oh, yeah. that's just something we absolutely have got to change, not, you know, oh, yes. or help, change, help change anyway. Uh, yes. That's, and, and I think it is, I think you said that, that it's the best, better time to be single than ever, oh, you know, in terms of, in totally. terms of that. I mean, yeah. any, any alternative lifestyle, it's wow, you know, so acceptable yeah. now. And, and there's so much less shaming and stigma. Mm-hmm. I do want to reemphasize that this segment is not about, you know, you have to be, here's how you're going to be coupled or whatever. It's really about just the awareness of what sort of psychological stuff goes on with people if they're single for a long time. This does not yes. mean you need to be coupled. I just really, really want oh, people no. to understand that. Correct. Um, there is it's not, you're not any more, you know, evolved or valiant or redeemable or valuable because you're a part of a couple. However, I will say having been an, you know, excluded from that club, that married mm. person club for a really yeah. long time, it, it is, it's, you can feel it. You can, yeah. it's, you know, visceral when you can't seem to get in you can't seem to penetrate yeah it's it's interesting you just brought that up because actually point four is that what they say here is that heightened social anxiety is one of the psychological effects or could be that that being single can lead to heightened social anxiety uh especially involving situations with couples or 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 new dates that you do you you become anxious when you go out with couples or that that, and you, I think you just said that you absolutely experienced that. Um, yes. And I would say to um, singles watching, if you have a chance to be, and I hate to say third wheel, but okay, third wheel, mm-hmm. whatever, take it, do it, go out with your couple friends, mm-hmm. go out with your couple friends. It gets you out number one. And it, there's no pressure and you're just, mm-hmm. you know, you can be yourself and you're not on a date, but it does allow you to get out. And I mean, anything that, that gets you out is going to be good. Point five here. Now, this is this is a good one. There are good and bad <laughs> psychological effects to being single for a long time. And that uh, here's a change in priorities, meaning yeah. that instead of focusing on a partner, that single people may prioritize career goals, hobbies, friendships, self-care, yes. that all good stuff that we that goes by the wayside if you're focusing on a partner. In a way, yes. Or can um, go by the wayside. Of course, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say enough for single life. I, for the most part, loved it. I had a very full, active life. Yes, I was missing love. Yes, I was missing a healthy, stable relationship and partnership. I did miss that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I did get to a point, as you know, which was my turning point where I thought, you know what, I'm going to be single forever. That is just going to be fine because mm-hmm. I'm fine. So uh, to feel that, uh, I mean, if you, if you want love, it is out there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I really believe that if you don't, and you're cool on your own and you know, there's something to be said for that attitude, because in a way that's how I found love. In mm-hmm. fact, instead of me finding love, it was really love found me. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's the difference. So God bless if you love being single and you make the most of it. That is what you should be doing. And let me just add about the the um, the path you're on as a, as a single person, as a singleton. Uh, it shouldn't uh, preclude you from doing anything. It shouldn't. You shouldn't make it so your other stuff to the exclusion mm-hmm. of staying open, being open to meeting someone. It's because that's the magic, and it's called. There's actually a word for it. It's called active luck. It's when hmm. it's the combination of human action and randomness. And there you go. And mm-hmm. it does happen when you least expect it. And, and I know people have mixed emotions about that whole concept of happening when you least expect it, mm-hmm. but it's true. So yes, definitely uh, go about your life because that is usually when it happens. And by the way, you won't have missed anything or, or, or wasted any time because you're doing stuff you love anyway. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. And this is a great benefit. And especially if you can, you know, approach it the way you just described it, which also leads to at point number six here is personal growth. And I really, I really thought about you when I read this, that 
you be uh, you develop a really strong sense as it says here of uh, of self reliance and independence does that sound familiar yes yes whether you want it or not you will develop it it's it is a muscle that you work every day and you don't even realize that you're you're working it mm -hmm. and suddenly you find yourself stronger and more resilient in certain situations and in yes you know it's sometimes being on your own going solo it is not always fun but to master it to excel at being on your own is mm -hmm. some really great skills for life what, what's interesting here is that the self-reliance and independence once you do uh, go go into a relationship or if you do you don't even realize maybe what what you're giving up, so to speak, or, or you don't realize how self-reliant you are. Oh my Be, God. You know, yeah. Do you have a, <laughs> do you have a hidden camera into our... <laughs> no, I don't have a hidden camera, but you, you guys said that on the interview. Oh it was, it's my a, God. Yeah. It, it, it was an adjustment. Okay. I was a professional single person mm -hmm. and now, oh my God, my world's been turned up upside down. There's someone in my home. There's like this thing and a cre I call him a creature, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful creature. And, and yes, things changed. And, and here's the hardest part. I am so used to doing things on my own. I'm so used to being fiercely independent that I forget. And still, and we are going on 10 years in mm -hmm. two weeks will be, it'll be 10 years. Um, I still forget I have a partner. I still forget I have someone mm -hmm. to help me. I mean, if I could change my own tire, I would. I, I, this, that's just, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how I'm wired. I do want to say something about all of these great single skills that you guys are developing and all mm -hmm. of these wonderful things about your life and your hobbies and your world. You know, you, you'll know that you are in the right relationship. Uh, if you are if you are able to continue to be who you are in a relationship, you can still do all these things. There's mm -hmm. nothing that I can't or don't do because I'm married now. I am the same person. I do the same things. I have the same hobbies, the same friends. I have more friends. So that is just something that's been a, a delightful uh, aspect of this because he does let me be who I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, don't get me wrong. We get into it, especially with the the stuff I was just saying about oh my God, I forgot to ask him to mm -hmm. help me or to run something by him mm -hmm. because I'm independent. And, 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 and believe me, I think I'm, I'm speaking to the choir here. I'm preaching to the choir, to you and to all of the viewers who are like my friends now, by the way. I love all of you. If you're watching, some of you are my clients. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Doug, Doug and David and hi, Tom. I forgot what I was saying, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> but you got to get what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. I am preaching to the choir because you all have probably been married. So you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Some of this marriage stuff is still new to me. So, you know, I am telling you, this is how it feels for me. But you all know kind of this in that a good partnership, a good relationship is, mm -hmm. is one that you can absolutely be you. Well, it, it, it is. And there is experience to bring to the table. But, you know, again, this segment is about being single for a long time. Yes. And the psychological baggage, I'm going to call it, that you bring to the table or that somebody else brings to the table, if they're the one, that we, we need to understand that. We need to understand where where yeah. we are, where we're coming from, or where that other person may be, because there, you know, and this only happens when you're old, <laughs> because, yes. you know, you have to live to be single for a really long time. So this is very, very age focused to the over 50, over, over 50 uh, demographic. The last one here, desensitization to romantic relationships that over time, single people may become desensitized to the idea of being in a romantic relationship, that it just, the, the desire has been reduced. And there's really nothing wrong with that. What, what, what do you think? Okay. How, why did they add that? Okay, well, this was gonna be my final word on this anyway, because mm -hmm. this, we are now talking about something that I'm very, very concerned about. And I think it's, you know, on one hand, we talk about how great it is to be a well-adjusted, uh, secure, single person, right? But yes, there's almost too much of a good thing and I'm afraid, okay, by virtue of age, 
and the pandemic. Now you're too used to it, people. Mm -hmm. You're too yeah. comfortable being on your own. Do not become mm -hmm. so complacent that you that you that you end up perpetuating and self fulfilling, mm -hmm. right? Which is really not healthy. Mm -hmm. You're going to get so comfortable being home in your sweats. Mm -hmm. I fear. I have a little fear about that. That you're not going to get out. You're not going to get out. You're not going to try. Mm -hmm. You're not going to look good, you know, it's, it kind of built on itself, right? So self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. And that is my mm -hmm. fear. You know, I'm in sweats all the, who doesn't, everybody wants to be in their sweats and slippers. You slippers. look great in sweats, but, Trilla. Yeah, thank you. Well, you've seen me. <laughs> I think you've seen me in my underwear, maybe. You've, def you've definitely seen me uh, without makeup. Just, you get comfortable. You get lazy and we all do. We all do. And, 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 you know, we just, we, get, we got so used to not going anywhere, right? And you got so good at being alone. Yay, everybody. Okay. No, no, too much is not good. That's yeah. the point. I'm well, making. you don't want to become desensitized to the fact of where you're like, you're really kind of checking out of, of life, you know, let alone romantic relationships. Correct. It, you know, it, again, it's okay if you don't want a relationship. Some people are done. Yeah. And, you know, maybe for really, really good reasons. And that's, that's okay. Yes, that is but, true. But they, they yeah. would not be watching you right now. They would not be loyal that's, viewers. They that, would not be subscribers. Right. You if, all, if that, they, you know, big props to all of your, your viewers. You, I love them so much. I cannot give enough praise and, and love because they are engaged. They are <laughs> You know, they're interested, they're intellectually curious, they are emotionally curious, they want mm -hmm. to improve, they want and otherwise, right, why have a second act TV? This is perfect. You, well, you and, and the, this whole show has, you know, that's me. I wanted to improve yes. and learn. And so this, we all, we're all learning together. Well, we're yes. coming, we're coming to the end. There's the article ended here on something that I really liked. So I want to throw that out to you that uh, this is actually very positive that people who have been single for a long time may find that their time alone has sharpened their ability to choose a partner by knowing themselves that yes. they actually choose someone who is yeah. right for them versus yes, jumping yes. into something when you don't even know what you're doing. I love that point. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Okay. Yes. I mean, you have honed your single skills, so it has sharpened your skills to be more discerning, maybe taking a, a harder look at people, not being so desperate, not being so neat. You're not, you're not, you know, you've done it. It's an interesting topic at this time in our lives because we have had an opportunity to be single for a very long time. So I'm, I'm glad we were able to talk about this. You bring a lot to this conversation as you did in the uh, interview we did with Robbie. And again, I'll link to that. I think everybody needs to see the conversations mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. you Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And Treva, as always, I will link to all of your information. If you need a little help out there, Treva is a great oh, yes. coach. Yep. She's already working with you yes. know, quite a few <laughs> So oh, good. That, that's true. I love hearing that. That I love no, hearing you, that. No, you, 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 Silka, are and you and this show are the gift that keeps on giving to so many, to so <laughs> many. You have such an impact. Um, well, that's and, nice. No, you really do because I talk mm -hmm. to them, and it's apparent oh. in the comment section, which I love. I love a comment section. So yes, keep those cards and letters coming. <laughs> Well, thank you. Trevor. We love thank you. Thank you. And, and, and make sure you, where there it is, make sure you pick up Trevor's book, Done yes. Being Single, a great, great, great read. Let you into Trevor's life with all kinds of uh, wonderful thank advice. You so, much. so Trevor, thank you. I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. Thank you so much. This has been great. Love it all the time. Mm -hmm.